Hello, firefighters of the great state of Michigan. Today, we will cover per and polyfluoroalkyl substances, otherwise known as PFAS. What are they and how do they impact the emergency services? You have a crucial role in the health and safety of our community. You have a responsibility for protecting the environment in the midst of doing your job. And of course, you want to protect yourself. A welcome from your state of Michigan Fire Marshal, Kevin Selmeyer. Today we're going to provide you some information on some legislative changes that involves the use of Class B AFFF foam containing PFAS in relation to the Michigan Fire Service. We also need to spend some time and talk about potential exposure to firefighters from Class B AFFF foam. Further in this video, we're going to share with you the proper use, handling, and storage of Class B AFFF foam containing PFAS. A brief explanation of different compounds used by firefighters by the executive director of the Michigan PFAS Action Response Team, Abigail Hendershot. So the executive order of 2019-03 uh, actually established MPART, the Michigan PFAS Action Response Team, by Governor Whitmer as an enduring body to coordinate and collaborate on PFAS issues across the state of Michigan. The fire marshal's office and the fire service are important pieces of MPART. Uh, so MPART is made up of seven different agencies, but the fire marshal is important because we are able to then reach out to our fire stations, our fire departments across the state, and provide important information on the use of PFAS, especially Class B foam that is used for hydrocarbon fires. Uh, Class B foam does contain PFAS. Prevention and appropriate use of Class B foam is so important to um, preventing contamination and preventing, uh, you know, the use and spread of PFAS in our environment and protecting public health as well as the health of our firefighters and the citizens of our state. This family of compounds ranges anywhere from 6,000 to 10,000 different compounds. They're all um, made up of a very strong chemical bonds. They're um, virtually indestructible, which was why they're labeled the forever chemical. Not all AFFF has fluorinated compounds. The class B AFFF has those fluorinated compounds, not the class A foam. And so it's really an important distinction to make to you today. So one of the important things to recognize about PFAS is that once it gets into the environment, it really travels through our whole environment. So if it ends up in our water or ends up in our air, ends up in our soils, it can travel then. It's very soluble in water. It'll travel through water streams, lakes, it gets into our fish. And so it's important when we talk about firefighting foam to realize that anything that is sprayed on the ground for firefighting foam or sprayed onto a building and then water travels with it, that it's going to disperse into our environment. And PFAS has a very strong affinity to actually cycle through our environment, not only for water, but it also stays in our soils, it will get in our air, and it can bioaccumulate in our bodies. And so it's really important for the health of everyone, firefighters, our citizens, our fish, our uh, livestock, that we really minimize the use of uh, Class B AFFF fluorine-containing foams. The AFFF collection program is done by the state of uh, Michigan with MPART, and we will actually coordinate the pickup across the state from fire departments. MPART is really excited about the AFFF collection and pickup program because we've been able to take out over 51,000 gallons of AFFF from our state, preventing the use of it, preventing uh, contamination and exposure to our firefighters as well as our citizens. With concern for the safety of firefighters in Michigan, legislation was introduced by Michigan State Representative Jeff Yarick. As a former firefighter and now a legislator, it is so important to me to take care of the people that I used to work with as they continue to do their job. I introduced House Bill 4390, which prohibited the use of foam with PFAS elements in it, and also 
for requiring training of our firefighters to keep them safe from the risks. So I introduced House Bill 4391 to update Part 74, the firefighting rule in Myosha, so that we include elements such as how they handle foam with PFAS, decontaminate our gear after using PFAS, and generally make sure we have this ongoing standard to protect our firefighters. A statement on how firefighting foam affects the human body by environmental health manager for the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, Dr. Marcus Wasilevich. PFAS can get into your body in three main routes. One route is ingestion, one route is absorption through your skin, the other route is inhalation. If you have to use Class B AFFF firefighting foam with PFAS, after you're exposed to that foam, you need to make sure you clean off your gear, change your clothes, and take a shower. Michigan Department of Health and Human Services is conducting a project called PFOAMS, PFAS in Firefighters of Michigan study. This study is designed to look at the PFAS levels in serum of firefighters across the state of Michigan. This study will also look at their exposure, both occupational and other routes where they may be exposed to PFAS in their daily activities. This multi-year study will give us a better understanding of PFAS in firefighters and how they're exposed to it and how that may, at a future date, impact their health. If you have to use Class B AFFF firefighting foam with PFAS, using an eductor, or just pouring it out of a five gallon container, make sure you have gloves on, make sure you have respiratory protection, and make sure you're wearing eye protection. State of Michigan Fire Marshal, Kevin Selmeyer. I wanna make it very clear to the Michigan Fire Service that there is now a law in place that prohibits the use of Class B AFFF foam containing PFAS to be used in any training activities across our state. So you're gonna find yourself in an incident and you're gonna to need to make a decision whether Class B AFFF foam containing PFAS or fluorinated foam is appropriate. I want you to think before you push this button and pull this lever. Region 2 Coordinator with Bureau of Fire Services, Robert Stokes, speaks about what to do if firefighting foam is used. Firefighters cannot use Class B AFFF foam containing PFAS other than for life safety measures. Those life safety measures involve aircraft fires, tanker fires, and barrels at industrial plant facilities containing alcohol-based products. Anytime Class B AFFF foam containing PFAS is dispersed or used, the fire chief or the incident commander must make a notification to PEAS. PEAS hotline 800-292-4706. Anytime you're making Class B AFFF foam containing PFAS to mitigate an incident, you must wear all of your PPE including SCBA. Anytime you're handling Class B AFFF foam containing PFAS concentrate, you must have on hand protection, which will consist of rubber gloves, eye protection, safety glasses, as well as respiratory protection, which is particulate mass. Any equipment used to disperse AFFF Class B foam containing PFAS must be thoroughly rinsed out any nozzle, any appliance, any hoses must be cleaned and flushed out right there at the scene. So if you are the individual who have found yourself contaminated, please make sure that you're thoroughly rinsed off your gear and all of your PPE right there at the scene. If you've been flushed down at the scene or decon at the scene, when you head back to your station, make sure that you actually take the clothing off Take a shower within the hour and then put on fresh clothing. Whenever you're utilizing Class B AFFF foam containing PFAS at a scene, it is very important for you to pay attention and make sure that you're not allowing any of that contaminated runoff to get into the sewers, drains, or waterways. For my incident commanders out there, if you disperse Class B AFFF foam containing PFAS, please utilize the methods that you've learned from your hazmat classes. Those methods involve diking, diverting, as well as damming. This is to ensure that you can prevent any of the contaminated water from getting into the sewers, the drains, ultimately stopping it from getting into the waterways.
If you happen to have old product in your facility, which would be Class B AFFF foam containing PFAS, please contact the State Fire Marshal's office. The State Fire Marshal is doing a collaborative effort with Eagle in regards to pickup and disposal of old foam products, which is again, Class B AFFF foam containing PFAS. In closing, your State of Michigan Fire Marshal, Kevin Selmeyer. In the event that you were to use Class B AFFF foam containing PFAS at an emergency incident in the state of Michigan, please know that you are required to call the PEAS line and to report the use of Class B AFFF foam containing PFAS. This is important so that we can coordinate efforts to protect the environment at the same time that you are mitigating an emergency incident. Thank you to you, the members of the Michigan Fire Service, for responding to calls across the state. The goal of this video was to provide you with information on how you can protect yourself from the possible exposure to Class B AFFF foam containing PFAS, how we can protect the community by some of the practices if we had to use it in an emergency situation. And further, we all have the ability to protect our environment by using the information that was contained in this video. Please keep this in mind as you respond to incidents across Michigan. Thank you. For more information on firefighting foam and PFAS, visit michigan.gov forward slash PFAS foam, then click firefighting foam.